a series of three workshops. This is called What, very uh, inventively titled. But the three workshops are What, How, and Who, and that would that should give you a sense of what we are trying to do here, which is that today I'm going to do a bare bones explanation of the challenge, what cultural entrepreneurship is about, what we are trying to achieve, and how the challenge and the submissions will be judged, so that you have a sense of what you're working towards. So you, you have some idea of what you want to do, you have some general area in which you want to work, and this should help you focus your ideas, shape them, figure out how you want to actually present them uh, in, this, in this challenge. So we're very excited uh, about, for announcing this challenge, first of all. It's, it's, it's incredible. There's, there's, there's so much energy and momentum behind, uh, behind this idea of, of promoting cultural entrepreneurship, but for various reasons, and I'll, I'll show you why this is such an, such an important aspect of the economy, of our society, and of, of culture, and I hope that this will just promote more and more of you to, to get excited about this large chunk of the economy that oftentimes uh, kind of goes unnoticed, uh, or at least go, goes into that artistic arena, which you know, we may or may not want to deal with, but I think we all need to engage with it. We all need to be on the top, you know, literally on top of the, these issues if we if we want to uh, if we want to live in the kind of society that we all want to live. And so let me get into uh, get into the the what aspect of the uh, these cultural entrepreneurship challenge quickly. What is the challenge? We're challenging all of you to propose a plan for an organization that will combine artistic and entrepreneurial visions in order to create, again, an organization. And I'm, and I'm going to keep mentioning this word organization, and you'll see why. To create an organization that will, that will enhance the arts and or address societal issues. And the and or is important as well, and we'll, we'll see in just a second why. So again, that word, organization. The, and we'll come to this in, in a bit also, but to keep, if you take away one thing from this workshop today, we are looking for organizations that are of art. Okay, so I saw Lincoln the day before I was watching, I was making these slides. So, of art, by artists, and for artists. Uh, and what do we mean by that? Essentially, this is the so FAQ version of this will be, so I'm not an artist. I'm not. Uh, I'm not a musician. I'm not. Uh, I'm not a writer. Can I still be doing this? Yes, you can. Reverse. I am an artist. I don't know anything about business. I. I haven't actually worked in an organization per se. I don't know what you mean by all this. Can I still be submitting uh, a, a plan for this challenge? Yes. So that's the. Sort of, that's why the of art by artist. For artists, so you, you you don't have to be one or the other. You can, uh, or uh, and you don't you don't have to be an artist. You don't have to not be an artist just because it's about an organization. It would be great, uh, and we'll, when we come to talking about the team, we'll see one of the nice uh, one of the things about a good team is complementary skills. And so, if the team has both kinds of skills, uh, that would be wonderful. But it, again, it's not essential. Th these are this is a challenge that hopes to promote people wanting to start an organization that will be a financially sustainable. So what what we are not uh, looking for is one-off things that you might want to do, like sponsor X uh, or sponsor something, or or just promote uh, one exhibition or something like that. That that's not. It has to be viable, financially sustainable, going. It should be a going concern, uh, in, uh, as they say, about organizations. It, 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 we're interested in organizations that are going to create and provide infrastructure and support for artists and, cultu uh, arts and cultural individuals, other entities, etc. So you can be a meta organization trying to support other cultural organizations. That's fine if anyone has heard of the National Arts Strategy, for example. It's a, it's an umbrella organization that deals with a whole bunch of arts and culture organizations across the world. 
and tries to you know, bring them together, get them to learn from each other, best practices, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's infrastructural support. That's making sure that these organizations that in turn are supporting arts and culture are going to survive and thrive in, in today's ecosystem. And then the, the cultural and or societal impact. So I, and I mean societal and not necessarily social because social and social enterprises come to mean a very specific thing. And what we mean is, is uh, which will be made clear in the next slide, is much more this sort of impact on civilization uh, that arts and, uh, arts and cultural productions have. The expansion of minds, the opening of, the opening of new worlds for all of us. We mean that in, when we say societal impact. This is obviously going to be social impact as well, but because the President's Challenge ha has a very clear um, area demarcated for social impact organizations, I want to make clear that this is the societal as opposed to social in the, in the social enterprise sense. So let's parse some of these terms out. What do we mean by art? It's, uh, this, is, this is actually a, a, a list that is fairly commonly used. It's uh, almost exhaustive, I think. Uh, but the three big buckets are the visual arts, perform performing arts, and the literary arts, right? And, and all of these come under, uh, under, underneath these three big buckets. So think of, think of this as, are you going to be dealing in any of these areas? And, and you, you see when you go outside for the networking event after this, that the, there are designated areas for if you're interested, uh, you know, uh, along these lines, if you're interested in any, if you're interested in working in any of those areas, those are the nice, those are nice places to gather around and get to meet other people, trying to do similar things, trying to, and maybe figure out the team, etc. Uh, so th these these are the areas that we are looking at, and what are the kinds of organizations that we are looking at? It's, uh, I'm not going to go into each of these, but do people recognize any of these names? Be hands. Community, can I see a show of hands if, if people recognize these names? Community Music Works, Creative Capital, okay, good. Etsy, okay. Jazz at Lincoln Center, Jazz at Lincoln Center, not Lincoln Center. Okay, good. Uh, Kickstarter, Opera Singers Initiative, Globalist, Sundance, all right, and the Silk Road Project. Which is right next door to us and, and a big supporter of, of this endeavor. Now, I, I want you to notice one thing in here because it's, it's relevant. Many of these, uh, look at the website addresses. Many of them are .org addresses, okay? So many of these are uh, not for profit organizations. So that raises the question are we looking for not for profit ideas? No, not exclusively. So, yes, you could have a not-for-profit idea uh, as, as your organization, but it's, that's not exclusive. In fact, I would actually say that this is, this is symptomatic of what we hope to address through this challenge. That until now, most, most people have associated the arts and culture arena with the sort of public funding. This is the social good, this is a not-for-profit kind of an endeavor uh, or enterprise, uh, that's the standard association that people have. And, and, and we, we want to change that. We don't think that this is, this is purely the purview of not-for-profit organizations. We think, we think that business and, uh, business and the arts and culture can coexist. We think that this can actually happen. I teach an entire course on that here at Harvard Business School about organizations and, and businesses in the world of arts and culture. And on, it's, it's on entrepreneurship in, um, in the cultural and creative industries. And so we, we really do think that uh, this is extreme dependence on, and I spent quite some time, trying, you know, I spent a lot of time trying to think, okay, so I need to put in some dot com thing here. And it, it took me a while, and then, you know, I, I just come from seeing a movie. Uh, so I, I stopped. But, uh, but this extreme dependence that we have and this mindset that has come to, come to prevail, that 
business and, and arts and culture are in some way antithetical to each other. We would, we would like to challenge that. We would like for you to challenge that. We would like to see ideas that don't necessarily have to be not for profit uh, because, because it, we think it is possible for the two, uh, the two motivations to coexist. And we've seen that happen in, in, the, in the social enterprise field. When there, was, there, there used to be a sense that social enterprise anything that had a, a social motive uh, or a social benefit couldn't possibly be for profit because that's just wrong in some way. And the, a similar uh, mentality exists now, uh, also in arts and culture organizations, but just like that has changed in the social enterprise, not quite that, but has changed and is changing in the social enterprise arena, we hope that the same thing will happen in the cultural arena. And so don't, don't, uh, don't read too much into, into the .org addresses in terms of what it means for your idea. These just happen to be examples. We, we welcome both kinds of we welcome both kinds of ideas and both kinds of organizations. It doesn't have to be one or the other. So coming to where the the four areas that are listed under the cultural entrepreneurship challenge as being the the areas in which to which are suggested areas. So again, remember these are suggested. These are not exhaustive areas and issues that we think the arts and culture arena faces. Uh, uh, Megan, are we going to be uh, putting up the slides? So nobody needs to take notes in detail, right? I, I can give them. Yeah. Okay. So the slides will be on the website. You don't have to worry about taking detailed notes and copying these slides out. Take notes, obviously, if you feel like it. But um, so the four areas that we are um, we are looking at as being um, as being sort of indicative of where we feel entrepreneurs such as yourselves can make the most impact are, are up here. So funding and audiences, broad cultural impact, expanding horizons and access, and artist services and support. And let me go quickly through what we mean by this. So in the funding and audiences section, how many of you here have heard over and over again that the audiences for arts and cultural products are declining? Yeah. Uh, so, how many of you have heard that funding is declining for this because public funding, which is always seen as as the as the main uh, source of funding for cultural uh, organizations, has has been declining for various reasons. Same thing for private philanthropic funding. And so, this brings us back to that financially sustainable organization point, right? So, we we are looking we're looking for organizations that have an idea for addressing these two problems, that, that the audiences are declining for, um, for artistic and cultural products. And that, so, so one, so if, you, if you think of audiences as paying members, that's one source of funding that is declining. But also the, this is input funding, which is the public sources of funding or philanthropic funding, has been declining due to you know, the economic crisis, the general other the competing sources, uh, competing areas for uh, for philanthropic giving or public funding, etc. And so, if there is, if if you have an idea that would enable artists to reach wider audiences, and again, artists remember those were all those things. Artists are those who create art, and what is art? All those things that were listed in that slide before. So, if you have an idea that will help create markets for artistic production or to help, audience, uh, help artists find audiences, I guess audiences find artists as well, that's, uh, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's something that that's an idea that will address a really critical issue in the arts world, in the arts world today. Um, the, second, the second point, the broad cultural impact brings us to what I was saying about the cultural and uh, or societal impact. So, all of us here, I think, would agree unanimously that the arts have a huge impact on the way we think. Uh, uh, the, you know, the arts open our minds to, to new ideas, the various literary objects, uh, literary products have 
shown us just worlds that we could never physically maybe travel to, but have opened our eyes to new ways of thinking. So it's, it's the, the, the arts are powerful at, at being able to do this in a sort of fun way, in, in not a uh, here, listen, this, this is the new idea that we need to think about, not in that kind of a way. And so if we could, if we could find a way for, to enable artists, or if artists could find a way to enable themselves to reach the maximum impact that they could in this sense of being able to create a broader communities that come together to enjoy the art and, and in that way move forward and, and, and we have we have sort of a flourishing civilized society because of all of this interaction, that would be a fabulous organization for us for us to uh, to discover and fund and try to try to help. So this is the this is the broader societal and cultural impact aspect. So let's not let's try to see how arts and artists can have the maximum impact that they are, I would say, meant to do, which is to open people's minds to new ideas and new thinking. And if there's an organization that we can think of that can do that, that would be that would be greatly welcome. I keep going next to a double mic or something. But the, 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 third, uh, the third area here is, has to do with all the changes that are happening in the world today. So if you uh, remember the, the list of organizations I put up before, there were, there were so Behance is one that is almost exclusively online, uh, Kickstarter is another that's exclusively online. So the, the, there's, there's obviously technological changes just in terms of there being a new medium of distribution. But there are other technological changes that are happening that are affecting the arts. Um, there is, I don't know if you know, there's an organization called Sedition, um, which is a limited edition digital only print gallery. So you go there, you would buy a digital only print, and that would sit on your computer. That would be your art piece. Uh, and if, you know, they have prints from Damien Hirst, etc. There are way, there are, uh, I don't know how well it's doing and what, uh, you know, what happens beyond the sort of you buy it and it sits on your computer, how do you actually, you know, have it in your room? You'd have to have one of these screens, I guess, uh, in, your, in your room. But, uh, but this is an interesting, this is, these are interesting changes. It's like we, we live in interesting times, as they say. There are these changes happening, technological, social, economic, demographic, all of those have to do with the audiences issue. There are lots of changes happening. And many times, people are, especially the creators, the artists, are not quite sure how to deal with them and how to make, take the most advantage of these changes in, for the production of the best art that they can ever produce, for the distribution of that art. And, and if, there are, if, if there are ways that we can come together to and improve access for these artists to these technologies, to these other changes, uh, and to help them improve their art, or help them actually get that art out. So both the production and the distribution, and in some ways the consumption, changing people's ways of thinking about how to consume that art. Um, that's, that's another type of idea that would, because it's, that would uh, catch our uh, fancy, because that is um, definitely another big issue facing artists today and the production of culture. And then, and finally, and again, I, when, I, when I say finally, I just mean finally for the sake of, for the purposes of this list, right? We, we this is an indicative list. We, there might be things that we, uh, we have missed out that may not exactly fit into one of these areas. So, um, so, so don't get, don't think it has to fit right here. It has to fit the broader cultural entrepreneurship idea. The artist services and support is much more to do with this notion of an art world. And art worlds uh, have, been, have been described as all of the other pieces that make it possible for artists to produce art, to disseminate it, and to, and to, uh, to distribute it. So think about, uh, th there is this, this, this notion of artists being sole geniuses creatively sort of just creating somewhere. It doesn't happen that way. Somebody needs to make those instruments. Somebody needs to make the paint and the, and the canvas, but that's sort of really the really nuts and bolts part. But somebody needs to be uh, to be educating audiences about this. Some, there are entire ecosystems in place that enable artists 
to produce that, that art and then, uh, and then disseminate it and have it consumed. And those are so any anything that would sort of provide infrastructure and support services to artists would fall into into this category. But there would also be anything that sort of tries to bridge different art worlds. So the, the, these silos that exist in artistic production, which is you know you have artists on one on the one end and, and you have musicians on the other end. So art by artists I mean like drawing artists uh, and musicians on the other end. And somehow the, the two don't talk to each other. The two groups never talk to each other, or at least seldom talk to each other. And are there ways to actually take that, take those silos away, break down those boundaries, and do something through cross fertilization that actually will, will have that much more of an impact uh, as they, uh, in society that would create a different type of art and a different type of cultural product that would have a different level of impact? So anything that tries to do that. Would um, would fall under that category, and again, these these categories are explained in greater detail on the website, and uh, this is there. Obviously, these slides are up there. So, the most commonly asked question the, that does come up um, when I when I talk about these challenges: where, How is this different from the arts area uh, in the President's Challenge? So, if you've seen the President's Challenge, there is there are. Uh, there are four more, sort of more social-like areas: disaster management, education, etc. And then there's the arts area. Quick answer: organization. Remember, I kept talking about that word, and and that word becomes really crucial here. The Cultural Entrepreneurship Challenge focuses on proposals for cultural organizations that will bring together artistic and and organizational or entrepreneurial endeavors. The arts area of the President's Challenge is focused on artistic expression, so the production of an artistic product, um, like, like, a, like sculpture, uh, painting, or a piece of music, etc., that speaks to the other four areas in the President's Challenge. So that, that is not about an organization, whereas the Cultural Entrepreneurship Challenge is about an organization. The, the President's Challenge is about an artistic product that would speak to uh, the four areas in the uh, in the other four areas in the challenge. Somehow communicate those problems, maybe use it to address those problems, etc. John, and then questions. Yes, you can apply to. You can send something to both, right? Um, you would, uh, you something, uh, an organization might fit into the president's challenge, arts area, but a pure just a piece of art that is meant to. My, my one of my colleagues' favorite examples is: is are, do I want to make a series of sculptures that point to the exit uh, route in a in a disaster situation? That would not meet the criteria of the cultural entrepreneurship challenge because that is purely just a sense of okay, this is what we are going to going to do in an artistic way. So it is, there isn't a there isn't a financially sustainable, viable, going concern like model that addresses some of the issues mentioned. Yeah, so one of project would not, but um, but you should you should submit. We will. We will we, we can also read out things if necessary if we feel that there is something that's, that could definitely fit in another, another of the challenges. You had a question. Same question. Okay, so the overlap is a uh, necessary but not sufficient kind of an overlap. Yes. There will be at least one pair of eyes, that, or two pairs of eyes, that will look at all, uh, all of the challenges. Um, and so, if there is something that is so clearly in one but not the other, and you have actually submitted to a to a different one, then that that can be taken care of. But the deadline the deadlines, etc., are slightly different, right, Megan? So you want to you want to be clear of that. I want to also address one thing that the word tweaking. Um, brought up uh, in my mind. So I, I want to stress this. Uh, these are areas 
that the deans of the business school and the faculty of arts and sciences um, uh, have decided are that these are areas that they want to promote uh, in this in, through this challenge, right? So there are multiple there are multiple worthy areas in this world that need to have a, a, that need to have some sort of entrepreneurial uh, vision to address them, and there are multiple ways of, of funding them. This is not one of those. This is a very specific. This is what we want to we want to help happen in the world. Kind of a kind of a challenge. And so if so, so if someone tries to force it an idea, uh, I'm using a stronger word than seek, and I'm not saying you want to do it. I'm just it, it sparks my uh, it sparks my thinking, and I want to make that clear. Do not please try to force it an idea just because oh there is a cultural entrepreneurship challenge, and so I want to want to enter that, and somehow I'm going to try to make this fit into either one of these areas or just in the broader cultural entrepreneurship um, review, so to speak. Try to try and understand that that's not going to work. There's a very clear sense of what we want to what we want to promote, which is a set of organizations that unite artistic and entrepreneurial visions to create an environment that will allow the arts to thrive and have maximum impact in society. That's the, that's the, what we are looking for. Uh, don't try to force it. It's, uh, there are three different challenges out there. There definitely somewhere something will will work for you. It's the same thing with the president's challenge. You know, there there are always questions of why these four areas. There are all sorts of problems in this world. Yes, there are, but these are the four areas that we've chosen. So don't try to force it something into the learning area just because. Um, just because that's an area out there. So, so keep that in mind. It's, a, it's really a question of being true to what it is that you want to do and, and, and not trying to for, find another avenue for the funding and the support for that idea, which will be a better avenue because you'll get better and more focused uh, uh, mentorship with that kind of uh, where you would go. Whereas where you'll get a particular type of mentorship and support and help. So try not to... Um, Force there. Challenge log logistics, and I think we will go through this really quickly because uh, this is this is all on the website. This is all stuff that that that, yeah, that you can easily find outside of today. Uh, let's look at the the main thing is that today the registration opens. If you if you're interested in in applying, if you're interested in being part of this, uh, today is the day that it opens. It actually closes on. February 24th, so you have about about four weeks, uh, a little less than that. There are a bunch of, like I said, this is a, uh, for the Cultural Entrepreneurship Challenge per se. This is the first of three uh, workshops. I have I have uh, here Michael Spalter, who's going to do the uh, who's going to do the second workshop next week uh, on the how on the uh, the cultural landscape and the ecosystem. Just so you know, he's going to do it with Jim Bildner from. Uh, from the Kennedy School, and just so you understand how these organizations that exist currently function, because you want to know what the system is like now if you want to disrupt it, if you want to figure out how to do things in a different way and, and to change that, that ecosystem, we're going to understand what, the, what ecosystem exists now. In the, WHO, um, in the WHO workshop, we're actually going to talk to two uh, cultural entrepreneurs. One is Randy Weiner, who runs um, who runs the theater and performing arts area in uh, a center in New York City, and um, the other is Christina Pato, a musician who works also with the Silk Road Project, and who uh, both of whom are cultural entrepreneurs. But they are so remember the art artists by the artists uh, for the artists kind of thing. They they bring the two kinds of um, of artists and by artists kinds of uh, organizations together, and they bring those perspectives to the workshop. So those those will be really helpful as you try and figure out what really are uh, what really can I do in the existing system? Who are the kinds of people that I'm that are that have done something like this, and what can I do about that? And how can I learn from their experiences, which will help you create your your submission? The evaluation happens from February to April, and then April to May is when the, the finalist teams receive 
uh, membership and they get to get to uh, continue the proposal development with the with the money. So how many finalists, etc. And I'll, I'll talk about that in just a bit. But a quick explanation of what the submission should contain. Right? Again, all this information is online, but uh, just to reiterate, please describe your idea. Make make it very clear what you're trying to do, what issues it addresses, what, what are the changes you're trying to uh, make, what is the impact that it is going to have. Uh, may, provide a description of any progress that you have made on that idea. So if it is right now just just on paper, which is great, uh, leave it at that. But if it is that you have managed to actually get some, uh, some deployment, get some funding from anywhere, Provide, uh, provide a description of that. Obviously, describe the product or service that you're trying to do, so, which is slightly different from the idea and its impact. So you have, a, you have a sense of this is the goal and this is what you want to do, and then you're going to do it through this product or service, and you'll explain in the next point with your, with your theory of change why and how this product or service that you're actually doing will achieve the goal that you, that you set out to set out your team. Provide, uh, this is like any, any good assignment, any good piece of writing that you're trying to raise money for, get support for. Provide some supporting data and evidence. Let it not just be um, you know, smoke and mirrors. Uh, or, find, or tell us how you will find that, uh, that supporting evidence, how you will find those data that might, be, that might help you support your theory of change, why this will work, and why this particular way of doing it will work. And, and um, since we, are, we would be giving out money and mentorship, uh, we would like to know how you're going to use that money and whether it is going to actually uh, be used in a particular way that we feel is, uh, is going to have the maximum impact. If you're giving out money, it would be good to know that it's going um, to be used in the in the right way, as in in, the, in, the, in a way that would maximize its impact on achieving your goal. So give us give us a description of how the money will work. Very important. Keep your submissions to ten pages, including slides and exhibits. So that's keep that absolutely in mind. And this is the judging process. So after the preliminary judging round, the finalist pool will consist of up to ten teams, and up to is uh, is important to remember. And the winner and runners-up that will be announced are up to four, so that it won't be zero, hopefully. Um, there will be one to four, um, one to four. I guess that should be true for the finalist pool also, um, that it won't be zero is, is what, I would, uh, what I would hope. One other thing, um, this is something I uh, learned from last year's um, experience, is that try to, um, try to make sure your submission prints out the way you want to print out. Uh, the reason being, sometimes uh, things have to be faxed. I think uh, these submissions have to be emailed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Just make sure before sending it that when it prints out, it, it looks uh, it looks the way you want it to look, and it's not all it's not all this kind of a slide, which will print out all black, uh, it, it especially if faxed. So this is okay uh, for a PowerPoint, uh, but not. Uh, not otherwise. What are the methods? And, and uh, this, these also are up there um, on, online for you to see, but I, I want to talk to them quickly here so that if you have questions, I can answer those. And I'll go through them one by one. Organizational infrastructure, this goes back to that magic word, organizations. We are looking for organizations, not just one off. Uh, expressions of artistic vision. We're looking for uh, ventures that will have impact. We're looking. We're going to judge the plan and the proposal on the basis of the impact that it can have. Is it an innovative approach to solve one of these problems or, uh, or to address one of these issues that we have been we have been talking about? Is this um, can this be scaled? This goes back to is related to the organization part. Can this be scaled? Can this survive? Can this stay? Uh, can this stay viable for a long time, and will it have a substantial and measurable impact? That's that's what uh, that's what we are looking for. The team. This is what I was talking about before. It's always tons and tons of studies have shown that having just one type of 
person on the team with one functional skill or speciality doesn't work, in a, especially in a founding team. A, a, an organization, especially in the beginning, just needs so many different things to be done. It is impossible for just finance jobs to do everything or just product developers to do everything. It just it, it does not work. And so having complementary skills, and in this in this uh, in this case, having you know having the, the sort of uh, an understanding, showing that uh, showing that you understand the arena in which you're trying to work uh, would be another of those sort of complementary skills that we're looking for. We're looking, we want to see commitment. We we and and we can tell, we can tell even from uh, a set of a set of ten pages and slides and exhibits whether this, were, this is a group that is truly committed to making this idea work or not. And we want to see that. And the, the, the sort of cutoff really is that the team has to have at least one Harvard student. Um, and the key role is highlighted because what we um, don't want is uh, just someone tacked on just for the sake of, of uh, fulfilling this requirement. And so uh, the key role is important. The plan that you submit needs to be realistic. And we have we, we will have judges that have done these kinds of things many many times or seen these kinds of plans many many times in these, this context or in other contexts. They will know what a realistic plan looks. They know what a realistic plan looks like. They know that uh, they know when something has been blown out of proportion to show impact or to show sustainability. So it really has to be realistic in how it is going to execute uh, on all the things that you want to execute on. It has to show domain expertise. You need to feel that you know what you're talking about uh, when you say you're going to do this in this area. And remember the word innovative. We, it, would be not, it would be very nice to not receive not the sort of hundreds of replica of kickstarter.com. It's, it's, there, it's there, people, and, and maybe, there is, maybe there is something to, to be said for doing Kickstarter only in this little tiny arena, but then that would be judged on its merits, uh, on, on whether really that needs to be done. So think of, think of, some, think of an idea that is truly innovative, but just of this, the heart of all these problems that are out there that we feel entrepreneurial visions can address. Resources are going to be very necessary, and you're going to be asking for uh, resources to a certain extent, but uh, but it would be again this ties in with the realistic uh, concept. Can, are there uh, are the team members realistic about what resources they're going to need, or are they just asking for the size, or thinking that they can get the size just because they can? Uh, is this is this going to be financially viable and sustainable? Just understanding that, and like I said, how the prize money will be used. Do you have a good sense of of the hurdles you will face. So this is all tied to the realistic aspect, that there are going to be challenges. Uh, do you have a good sense of what hurdles you'll face? What are the risks? What can go right? What can go wrong? What are the... What, what, to go back to the supporting data and evidence, what data would you need to show that this is the right theory of change? What are your hypotheses? How will you test these hypotheses? Some idea about that would be... Uh, would be useful to have. So, and a, a plan that hits a high on all of these metrics would be a winner, um, and would be would be definitely something that we would be interested in supporting, mentoring, and providing uh, providing funding for. So, th those are those are the that's sort of the quickest overview of uh, cultural entrepreneurship that I can give. If, you, if questions arise, feel free. Thank you. Thank you.